Today, we'll take this photo of water, and this photo of a girl, and create this beautiful double exposure effect. This effect is super fun and artsy, and you can really make it your own. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download the exercise files in the video description. There are two basic steps for creating a double exposure. First, make a selection of your subject. And second, gradually add layers on top of this selection to create the effect. Now, you'll see as we go through this video, there are a few other little steps here and there, but the main steps are selecting the subject and adding in layers that blend together. So let's get started with making a selection of the model. I'll grab the selection brush tool right here, and then I can paint over our model to create a selection. And you can adjust the size of your paintbrush at any time by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. So I'll just go ahead and paint. And if you ever select too much, you can come up to the context toolbar and change the mode to subtract. Or as a shortcut, you can always hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then click to remove from your selection. Now for this image, we actually don't need a perfect selection because we'll be covering a lot of our subject with water. However, one part of the image that I really want to get right is this area right here with the face and the hand. So I'm just going to zoom in here, and with a small paintbrush, I'm going to get rid of the parts of the background that I don't want included in the selection. Keep in mind that I'm holding down Alt or Option as I'm removing these areas. This is looking really good. Now, the sleeve and the hair are not going to be perfect in the selection, and that's okay for this particular image. However, I just want to show you, if you did want a better selection, you can always refine your selection by coming up to the context toolbar and pressing refine. Then, using this default brush, you can just paint over the edges of the hair, and it will tell Affinity to take a second look at these areas. And right here on the sleeve, I can see that I'd like to add to my selection. So I'm going to change the adjustment brush to foreground, which will add this area to the selection if I paint over it. You can continue to paint over areas if you'd like. For now, I'm just going to press apply. All right, so our selection has been made. Now we just need to delete the background. To do this, go down here and press on the mask icon. As you can see, the entire background has been masked out, and we're only left with our selection. Now, to completely delete this background, right-click on the layer, and then go down and press Rasterize. Right now, we have a mask applied, but I want to completely get rid of all of that information by pressing Rasterize. So now, we just have the image of the girl on its own, on its own layer. So the next thing I want to do is place her in the center of the document. So I'll deselect by pressing Command or Control D. Then I'll grab the Move tool so that I can adjust where she sits in the document. Right now, we have a transparent background. To add a background again, I'm going to select the Rectangle tool, and then I'll click and drag a rectangle. Then I'll bring this rectangle layer underneath our subject. We now have our base done for this double exposure project. Now it's time to have some fun with layer blending. First, I want to bring in our water image. To do that, I'll press Command or Control C to copy it. Then I'll go back to our model image and press Command or Control V to paste it. 
The next thing I want to do is I want to bring this on top of the layer stack. Then I'm going to decrease the opacity so that I can see where I'm placing it in the document. I'll just select the move tool and then I can move this in place. Now my plan for this image is to use the shape of these waves and the shape of our subject to align these areas. I like that this kind of mimics the shape of her arm curling in, so that's where I'd like it to be placed. So I'll just lower the opacity and position these waves how I'd like them. All right, once you have it positioned where you'd like it, go ahead and bring the opacity back up. Then I want to mask this water so that it's perfectly clipped inside of where the model is. To do this, I have a little shortcut for you. If you hold down Command or Control on your keyboard and then click on the model layer, it will load that layer as a selection. Now, with the water layer still selected, I can press on the mask icon and the water will be masked to this area. All right, now I just want to add another copy of our model on top of this. So I'm going to press Command or Control J and then I'll drag this model to the top. I'm doing this so that I can blend the model and the water together. So I've kind of sandwiched the model, water, model, and you'll see why as we begin to blend these layers together. I'm going to change this top layer to the lighten blend mode. This creates a cool effect where we can see the water in the areas where the water is lighter than the model, like her dark hair and clothes. As one last step to set all this up, I'm also going to add a mask to this layer. So I'll click on the mask icon to do that. This will help us to hide or reveal this layer as needed. All right, with all of this set up, it's time to add your own artistic flair. <laughs> if you want to add more water to the image, then all you need to do is select the water layers mask. Then using the brush tool, I'll press B to bring that up. You can paint in black to remove the water or you can switch your paint color to white by pressing X. And X is just a really nice shortcut for this. It'll switch your colors between black and white. So using the white paint, I can add the water back in. I'm also using a low flow on my paintbrush so that I can gradually add in these areas. If you want more or less of your model layer, just click on that mask, and then you can paint in black and white to remove parts of the model. For example, I'll switch my color to black, and then I want to remove this area where you can see her shirt. Here we go. Over here, however, I want to see more of her face. I'll also go to the water layer and paint in black to remove a little bit more of the water off of her face and hand. So right now our selection is still up. If I press Command or Control D, I can deselect and now I can paint outside of our selection. I want to add more water to the overall image, so I'll switch my color to white to reveal the water on its mask layer. Then I can just paint to add in this water. So one important thing to remember as you're masking these areas is that white reveals and black paint conceals. So if you want to hide anything, just make sure you're painting in black. And if you want to reveal it, make sure you're painting in white. I think this is looking really good, and now you can see why our selection over by her hair didn't actually matter that much, but I think the profile and hand are looking great. Now I want to add a few finishing touches. First, I want to add more of this watery texture to the background. 
So I'm going to select the water layer, and then I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J. Then I'll drag this beneath our original model layer, and I'll also delete this mask. You can do this by clicking on the mask and then dragging it to the trash can. Then I'm going to take my move tool and I'm going to expand this image. Then I'm going to lower its opacity quite a bit. I just want to keep the texture of the water. I don't want it to completely overtake the image that we have here. I also only want this water texture behind her. So to do that, I first need to add a mask to this image. So I'll click on the mask icon and then select it. Then I'm going to grab the gradient tool. Now this tool will allow me to gradually fade out this effect as you go across the image. Remember that white reveals, so this color stop should stay white and black conceals, so I'm going to select this color stop and change it to black. We can also move this as needed, so if you want it to fade in even more gradually, you can move it closer, or you can move it farther away to still have some of it coming through here. I'm just going to bring mine to about here. All right, now it's time to add some beautiful coloring. First, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. Then I'm going to select the top layer so that this rectangle goes on top of this. Then I'll just click and drag out a rectangle. I want to make this rectangle kind of a peachy pink color to bring out the warmer tones of this image. I'll change this rectangle to soft light to do that. Here's the before and after of that coloring. I think this is taking away a bit too much of the blue in the water. So I'm going to come up here to my blend ranges and I'm just going to bring down this highlights node so that you can see more of the water. I'll bring it down about halfway. Then to add more depth to the colors, Let's add a recolor adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on my adjustments and then press recolor. I'm going to change it to a peachy color and I'll lower the saturation to 50%. Then I'm going to change the blend mode of this adjustment to soft light. Wow, that looks so good. Here's the before and the after of those color adjustments. Very nice. And as a last step, I'm going to change the color of this background rectangle to a super light pink color. There we have it, our beautiful double exposure. If you like making double exposures, you'll probably want some extra practice with it. Lucky for you, we have a free double exposures course, which walks you through four start to finish projects and also gives you some great tips for finding the right images for this effect. The link for this free course is in the video description. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.